Uh, I was shooting, I think, so I'm at this house. One of our sister friends, I think, got shot. And then uh, that's, you know, all hell broke loose. And this is the same type of gun that killed your son. Yeah, it's gonna have the same guts. Um, fire the same bullets. Load it up, pull the trigger, point and shoot. Slides forward. Technically, you could put 30 rounds in there, and as fast as you can pull the trigger, that's how fast 30 rounds will come out. Where were you when you found out? It's about five in the morning, I got a phone call. Um, the only reason I ever left my ringer on on my phone was in case something happened to Jake. So his mom calls me around five something in the morning and she says there's been an accident. And immediately I go, you just, when you have kids, you're just done. We have breaking news this morning, a deadly shooting rampage. Last July, in the small community of Muckleteo, Washington, a 19-year-old opened fire on a house party filled with peers from his high school class. And this is from the funeral. This is the picture I took as his last senior game. Dave Snyder's stepson, Jake Long, a college freshman, was killed in the attack. The shooting is a window into America's obsession with the AR-15, a rifle increasingly popularized by movies and video games that has also become a weapon of choice for some of America's bloodiest mass shootings. What happened that night? Uh, from what I was told, I saw there were about 20 kids. Will and Jordan were outside by an outside kitchen island uh, with an outside upright fireplace. Jake went over to the corner of the house, and this is where the, uh, the gunman was hiding, uh, apparently looking through into the big picture windows and looking at his ex-girlfriend, Anna. Jake, he may have been going home or whatever happened, he startled the guy, and the guy opened fire on him. Jake was shot three times in the back. Paul Kramer's son, Will, was shot during the attack, but survived. Paul said his son still wasn't ready to speak with the press. He uh, took a tough blow uh, a couple months ago. And yeah, if we can just go, you know, what happened? Will had to look over his shoulder to see. He saw Jake, his friend, go down. And then he got hit. His friend, Jordan Ebner, ran toward the house to try to get away, and the shooter put six bullets in him. Will is laying down and he's hearing the shooting and the screaming. He calls 911. Hello, 911. Hi, I need ambulances. He's laying out in the yard, he's bleeding. Shooter goes into the house and goes after his main target, his ex-girlfriend who didn't want to get back together with him. He just stood above her and put five bullets in her. I was shooting, I think, so I'm at this house. One of our sister friends, I think, got shot. So What's the address? I don't know. We're, we're by the water. It's, I heard multiple shots. The shooter murdered his ex-girlfriend, Anna Bowie, and two other former high school classmates, including Dave's stepson, Jake Long. Assault weapons and large-capacity magazines were banned for a decade. During the ban, the number of people killed and wounded with assault weapons or guns using high-capacity magazines was cut in half. After the ban expired, casualties shot up by more than 300%. And since then, AR-15s have been used in some of America's most notorious, deadliest mass shootings. These are good kids from good, loving families. As media attention grew following the shooting, Paul became outspoken about access to guns like the AR-15. I don't like to see my fellow citizens killing each other. You're hearing from uh, Will's father. A week after the shooting, Paul stood with Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson at a press conference as he called on the state legislature to pass a law banning AR-15 style rifles and high capacity magazines. Yeah, I thought about it a little bit. So I said, yes, I think that's a good idea to ban those weapons. Dave, however, disagreed with the call for an assault weapons ban. He felt that exercising his right to bear arms was more important than ever. So what was your reaction when you heard that people wanted to ban uh, assault weapons partly because of what happened? Right away, irritation. I'm just like, man, just any reason they can to get their agenda to go. This, I kind of felt exploited a little bit, like you're using my stepson's death to get your own agenda going, and that just kind of pissed me off. It still does. I'm just, nothing I can do about it. Dave had actually just purchased an AR-15 from the same gun store as the shooter. So you bought an AR-15 
just a couple weeks before Jake was killed? About a month, I'd say. Well, it was a week after the Florida shooting. I remember I even sent him a picture. I Jake, look at my new toy. And I had a picture of it, and it was shoot, like shooting down, not you know posing in front of a mirror or anything. But he said something like, cool, you know, and then he ends up getting killed by it. Dave then showed us the AR-15 he'd purchased. It was the first time he'd taken the gun out of the case since Jake was killed. Does uh, having this particular gun make you feel safer in the home? It does, even though the, the fact of the matter is I wouldn't be able to get this out of all the, the way I have it locked up, uh, get it out fast enough. Mm -hmm. I could probably use my handguns for that. Are you prepared to kill somebody? Oh yeah. I would have done it when I was 17, when I was in the military. That's what I told them I'd do. I definitely, when it comes to defending myself or my family, I'll take somebody out. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with that. What was your reaction when you first learned that this was the type of gun that killed Jake? I don't know. I didn't have a gut visceral reaction, I don't think. It's just kind of that whole thing just kind of numbs you. Some people go into anger, I guess. I just kind of went numb. And I'm kind of I'm still a little numb. In January, Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson proposed a ban on assault weapons and magazines that hold more than 10 bullets. Do you think that there is any uh, legitimate reason for owning an AR-15? I, I think I've reached the conclusion that uh, for personal safety, for hunting, for the types of uses for guns that we support as a society, the answer is no. That's the type of weapon uh, that does not have the type of personal use for safety or for hunting that we feel as a society is appropriate and relative to the cost that we are seeing in our society on a literally daily basis. The legal definition of an assault weapon generally includes one or more of the following features. Semi-automatic firing, accepts large capacity magazines, pistol grip, and folding stock. The shooting was a horrific moment for the sleepy community of Mukilteo, and it was up to the town's mayor, Jennifer Gregerson, to help the community cope. I, my sense is that the community feels like yeah, that kind of assault rifle, that number of rounds in a magazine uh, is, is one line to draw. Uh, for, our, for our country, I don't know when, I mean, if, if not now, when, I don't know. Do you believe that it will make a difference? I believe it would have prevented this event. An effort to create a new federal assault weapons ban was introduced after 20 children and six adults were killed by a gunman with an AR-15 at Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2012. But the bill was quickly defeated. The NRA's campaign to stop the gun ban pushed sales of the AR-15 higher and worked to shift the blame of unprecedented violence to a different industry. There exists in this country, sadly, a callous, corrupt, and corrupting shadow industry that sells and stows violence against its own people. Through vicious, violent video games. To better understand the NRA's case against violent video games, I met up with Christian Allen, who is not only an avid gun collector, he's also a leading video game designer, specializing in first-person shooter games like Halo. There's no statistical uh, causation in all the studies that have been done between violent video games and people actually committing violence. In your experience, how many people get their first introduction to shooting real guns from video games? Oh, I think a lot of people have, especially these days. And, you know, I've seen people that got into, uh, interested in, in, in firearms themselves by, you know, playing a game and saying, oh, that's my favorite gun you know, in, in the game, and I, you know, I want to get one in real life. Uh, so before I lay these down, I'm just going to double check them. Christian told me the Attorney General's proposed assault weapons ban won't work because unforeseen by lawmakers, rules can easily be sidestepped. This is uh, your classic AR-15. This is a Ruger Mini-14. Uh, there's functional differences, but from barrel length, magazine capacity, bullet, uh, cartridge that it uses, uh, they're exactly the same. The, the real difference is aesthetic. It's how they look. And if I took this one, they make black folding stocks that look just like this, and I can make it all black, and people would think it was an AR-15. Over the past decade, the AR-15 has become one of the best-selling guns in America. The National Shooting Sports Foundation estimates that Americans currently own 
between 5 and 10 million AR-15s. What changed from getting the, the handgun that the guy at the shop told you would stop a burglar to these days people buying this? They're very modular, they're inexpensive, um, they're easy to learn to shoot. Um, you know, one of the rules with handguns is that you, you need to shoot a lot with handguns to, to learn how to shoot them. And this you don't? Uh, not really, no. I mean, it's, it's pretty basic uh, once you know the functionality. It does feel really powerful. At the same time, it is pretty simple to use. The AR-15 is manufactured by dozens of American companies, including Smith & Wesson, Remington Arms, and Ruger. If you look at the advertising for gun manufacturers, you'll see things like get your man card back, and you'll see a lot of pictures of guys in you know, full tactical gear, and they're all dressed up in their you know, super camo and stuff like that. And there's just a segment of the population that has this idea that they can be soldiers and some people take it really seriously well they are cool to have you know they look cool you look on youtube and there's all these videos people have spent thousands on making theirs look really cool so there's that cool feeling about it where you know, shotgun's not so cool uh, not so macho you know a lot of that's everybody goes for the assault rifle the shooter had no gun training but two days before the shooting he began hinting at his plans on social media he posted a photo to instagram of his newly purchased ruger ar-15 and he tweeted, what's Ruger gonna think? He spent time in his car reading the owner's manual that night. He read the instruction manual in the car? Yes, as I understand it. He'd, he'd been playing um, video games. What role do you think that video games and movies play in popularizing the AR-15? Well, I think it's just that that's the weapon that, that people see a lot, and then they want to go buy a rifle, and they go to the store, and they look at a wall full of rifles, and they see the one that they know. You know, it's it's familiar. 911, what are you reporting? We're trapped in the bathroom. We locked the doors. OK, do we know what kind of a gun he was armed with? Yeah, it was like a big assault rifle looking thing. OK. I only, I don't know, I just, I'm just guessing from the games, I don't know. We try to, to make it feel as realistic as possible. All the audio uh, gunshots in the game were recorded from real guns. I have some land out east and, and I went out with an audio crew over the weekend uh, and we, we shot you know tons of different rifles. When you're in that first person view, uh, you just feel connected to the character. Um, you might feel like you are the character. After Jake was killed, was there any part of you that thought about getting rid of the AR-15? Oh, absolutely not. Um, I do have video games I play that have realistic gun sounds, and, and uh, I, cut, I cut my time down on that. It's kind of hard to play that game right now because um, they're very realistic. You hear there's an audio of the gunshots that happened at the party. That was really unnerving. The shooter had gone upstairs out to like a second floor balcony area and fired at two of the young adults who were there trying to get away. Okay, Natalie, you still there? <laughs> yeah. Okay, is there anybody, Alex, is there Alex, anybody there? Phone, they're coming, they're coming. Is there anybody there that <laughs> saw the suspect? He had another magazine in the car. He left the house, went to his car and drove away and kept driving. He got onto I-5 South heading towards Portland. The shooter later told police that he bought an AR-15 because it's, quote, a symbol of power. Here's a 19-year-old young man with his whole life ahead of him. From outward appearances, there was potential there. The shooter pleaded guilty, sparing the families and victims a lengthy trial, and likely sparing himself from Washington's death penalty. In the climate that we have today, where 30 years ago, one of these guys might have gone out and taken his own life, Today they go out and shoot someplace up. How do you prevent the kind of thing from happening again that happened to Jay? You don't. It'll happen again. It'll, it'll probably happen next week. It happens all around the country, all around the world. You, you can't prevent it. There are, I think there are over 300 million guns in the United States. 
Um, it's not something that's to be prevented. But when we make it so easy, when access to these kinds of weapons, when we make those so easily accessible, it's almost like we're asking for it. Our full documentary series takes on the issues like the influence of the NRA, smart gun technology, and guns on campus. Make sure to watch our entire series and subscribe to AJ Plus for more docs.